Welcome as we come to worship on the Feast of Christ the King. The Lord be with you. The Lord our God reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy and give him glory. Let's pray. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we begin our worship by singing. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for those things we have thought, said and done which separate us from you and from one another. You love us, but we too often find it hard to love others. So Lord, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help, but we ignore the cries of others. Christ, have mercy. You forgive us, but we bear grudges against one another. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's praise. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Raise the rafters with songs of praise. 
for the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. The Lord is our God, and we are his, the people of his pasture and the sheep of his flock. On this feast of Christ the King, the Sunday which is just before we begin a new church year with Advent, today and this week we pray. God our Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture and they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I, myself, will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Your word is a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your great faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, and what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put that power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fulfilness of him who fills all in all. 
Your word is a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And may the mouths, words of our mouths and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Gospel readings today give us two different ways of looking at the sort of king God will be when his kingdom fully comes in at the end of time. Today, we think about how God's promises will be fulfilled as we hear about them in the Old Testament and then as they are declared by Jesus in the new. The Bible tells us that a day will come when earthly governments will be swept away and all of creation will obey God's desires and commands. Ezekiel tells us that people will be fed well and have plenty of water and life and it will be good and full. If you lived on the edge of the desert in Israel 2,000 years ago trying to farm for a living or raise sheep, that is the kind of message you would have wanted to have heard. Ezekiel gives us a picture of God who will be like a shepherd with his sheep. For the people living in Old Testament, Israel, that would have been easily understandable. God will be the good shepherd and the prince will be the Messiah or King David come back from the dead. That's what the Old Testament prophet Isaiah tells us. It gives us a picture of a caring God who will be sensitive to our needs. He will save us from attackers and rescue us if we are lost. We will be able to lie down to rest in safe pastures. These sheep are definitely not feisty. They are well fed and watered. They are made to lie down. They seem completely dependent upon God, 
just as the sheep in a real flock must have been dependent upon their shepherd in the hill country of Israel, where there were wolves, bears and lions. God will search for the sheep and rescue them if they get lost. They don't have to do anything. God cares for them because they are members of the house of Israel, or sheep belonging to the flock of God would be another way of saying it. Members of the house of Israel are separate to the peoples of the earth. They are God's special people, which is how they are going to get to salvation. That's what Ezekiel seems to be saying. The picture Jesus gives us about membership of God's kingdom is really different. God will be in charge, but Jesus will be the king, like a junior king, overseeing the new earth on God's behalf. Jesus was seen by the church to be King David returned. And if you remember, King David was especially favoured by God. And he will be the saviour of Israel, the Messiah. The people who will be members of this kingdom, though, won't be selected by being members of the church or by being members of anything else. Instead, to get chosen to enter the kingdom of God, you will definitely need to have been a bit feisty. You will need to have been active, helping to build the kingdom of God on earth now, getting the earth ready so that it might already have started to look like what God wants when Jesus returns. You can't just be a member of a religious group. You have to be involved in doing the kinds of things Jesus told his disciples to do. The funny thing is, the sheep will not even realise that they have taken part in doing the things that Jesus asked his disciples to do. It's not an exam you have to sit down and take. You probably won't know that you have sat the exam. Because of that, it shows what truly lies in people's hearts. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, thirsty, needing clothes? They will ask Jesus. Jesus will reply, just as you did it for the least of these, you did it for me. The quiet, sleepy sheep of Ezekiel are ministered to by God, the good shepherd, because they are members of the house of Israel. The sheep of Matthew's gospel actually do the ministering to Jesus the king first. They serve Jesus first, not even knowing they are doing it, in the way they respond to other human beings who are in need. Having ministered to Jesus, they have taken part in building the kingdom, and he will then minister to them with the gift of eternal life. Those who are not allowed into Jesus' kingdom showed what they were like when they didn't respond to people who were in need of food, water or clothing. It told God everything he needed to know about what they are like. They are only focused on themselves. To be part of Jesus' kingdom, we have to serve others and give ourselves in love to care for them. Who was it that ministered to you? Maybe when you were in hospital or had some kind of accident, or needed long-term looking after? Who made sure you were safe when you were young or vulnerable? Those people were doing things that opened the kingdom of God to them, but I bet that's not why they did them. Who have you ministered to? Maybe you don't even remember but God does. Whoever they were, whatever their situation. Jesus will be king, but he expects all of those who are to be part of his kingdom to have lived and behaved like him, or at least to have tried as much as they were able to. Why the different pictures? Well, Ezekiel wants to reassure the people of Israel that even though God gave up on them because of their sin in the past, he has forgiven them and will take them back at the end of all time because they are his children. Matthew's account is not about reassuring people, but challenging them. 
Matthew shows the part of Jesus' teaching, which was about changing our lives and behaviour now, so that we look like members of the kingdom of God. Jesus challenged his disciples to live in the same way that he did and treat people with the same love that he treated them. That's why this part of the Gospel of Matthew challenges us today in the same way that it challenged Jesus' disciples all those years ago. It remains totally fresh and sharp, reminding us how all Christians should behave towards others whenever they have lived. It echoes that other part of the Gospels where Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of God is close at hand. Amen. Majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within me falls at your throne. Christ came and proclaimed the gospel, peace to those who are far off and peace to those who are near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest to labour and not to ask for reward, save that of knowing that I do your will. Amen. And so on this feast of Christ the King we pray. We come in confidence to present our prayers and supplications to the throne of grace. We pray 
for all those in positions of power, that they may govern with wisdom and integrity, serving the needs of their people. May your reign come, Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for the church, the sign of your reign, that it may extend your welcome to people of every race and background. May your kingdom come, Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for Christians of every denomination, that together we may come to understand the royal priesthood you bestowed on us in baptism. May your dominion come, Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for those whose commitment to truth brings them into conflict with earthly powers, that they may have the courage to endure. May your rule come, Lord. Hear our prayer. We pray for our community of faith, that, attentive to your word, we may always worship in spirit and in truth. May your reign come, Lord. Hear our prayer. Loving God, you taught us that the power of the heart is greater than the power of wealth and might. So hear us as we pray for the fulfilment of your reign. Merciful Father, accept our prayer for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, as he taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Kindle in our hearts, O God, the flame of love which never ceases, that it may burn in us, giving light to others. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light. Amen. Though many, we are one body in Christ, we belong to one another. By God's grace, we have different gifts. We will use them in faith. Rejoice in hope. Stand firm in trouble. Be constant in prayer. Filled with his spirit, we will serve the Lord. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>